Welcome to the Child Anxiety FAC podcast. FAC stands for Frequently Asked Questions, and I'll be answering your questions about child and teen anxiety. My name is Dawn Friedman, and I have been working with kids and families for over 30 years as a preschool teacher, parent educator, family case manager, clinical counselor, and now as the facilitator of Child Anxiety Support a program for parents of anxious kids. All right, let's get started. Hey, everyone. This week's question I have gotten from several people, and it is, could my toddler have anxiety? Another version of this is, how young might a child get anxiety? I've had people asking about infants. So I wanted to explain a little bit more about anxiety in very young children. But first of all, When we're talking about anxious kids, these are kids who also have an anxious temperament. And I've talked some about irritability. Irritable kids are exactly what you think, kids who are more easily annoyed or irritated by things. And this starts in infancy. Some babies are fussier than other babies. All toddlers are clingy, but some toddlers are more clingy. That's why it can be difficult to say, is this typical child development? Is this typical on the high irritability scale or is this anxiety? Irritability does not necessarily equal anxiety. However, there's a lot of research that shows that those of us with more irritable temperaments are more vulnerable to developing anxiety and depression. So whether or not an irritable toddler is anxious, we might not always know, but we do know that this is a child who we are going to need to be working on around coping skills. What I think is really challenging for us parents is we respond to that irritability with trying to soothe, which of course we do. And we do need to work on that. We need to teach our child to soothe by soothing them. But as they get older, we need to help them figure out how to soothe themselves, which goes to the diagnostic criteria in anxiety for very young children. And for this, I went back to my textbooks from my infant and toddler mental health certification that I got after I got my clinical mental health degree. And I'm using the DC-05, which is like the DSM for children five and under, It's the Diagnostic Classification of Mental Health and Developmental Disorders of Infancy and Early Childhood. So that's the book. And for those of you looking on the video, I'm holding it up in the video and it's backwards, but at least you can see it. And when I'm looking at the generalized anxiety disorder, when it comes to very young children, we are looking for symptoms that impact the family in the following ways, all right? And I'm going to read these directly from the book. This is page 53 of the book. One, cause distress to the young child. So the child is not happy with what's going on either. We would see this as irritability, tantrums, meltdowns, whining, crying. Two, interfere with the young child's relationships. That would include if you find yourself increasingly frustrated with them, if their teachers are struggling to connect with them, if your child is struggling in their friendships or in their sibling relationships. So that's two. Three is limit the young child's participation in developmentally expected activities or routines. Is the child unable to access the things that we would expect them to be able to access developmentally? So it is super common for a preschooler to cry when their parent drops them off at daycare but are they able to settle in a few minutes? If they're not able to settle, that's more of a concern. If the crying continues, that's something we need to look at. It could be a poor fit preschool. It could also be a child that is struggling with anxiety. Number four, do the symptoms limit the family's participation in everyday activities or routines? Exactly, that's the pitfalls. Are you limited? because of your child struggling. That's just as important. It's part of the diagnostic criteria. And five, do the symptoms limit the young child's ability to learn and develop new skills or interfere 
with developmental progress. In other words, is your child's anxiety interfering with their ability to toilet train, to be cared for by other trusted caregivers? Is it getting in the way of your child's growing and learning? If it is, that does not necessarily mean it is definitely anxiety, but it does mean that something is going on that we need to look at. And the first place we need to look is what's happening in the family dynamic, in the parent-child dynamic. I give this quote a lot. D.W. Winnicott, who is a developmental psychologist, gave the famous quote, show me a baby and I will show you a baby in someone else. What he meant was the relationship between parent and child is part of the child when they are very young. The child does not exist without this relationship because this relationship is holding them together, especially five and under. And we as parents have to be part of what we're looking at. It doesn't mean you're to blame. It doesn't mean that you're a bad parent. It means you are part of the solution because you're part of the case conceptualization of what is going on. This is especially true when they're very young. It remains true until they are up and out and on their own. Now, obviously, the way it looks with a three-year-old is different than the way it looks with a 13-year-old, and that also needs to be part of our case conceptualization. It is one reason why the earlier we can do this work, the more likely we're going to be able to make some progress. But we do need to be doing the work with the child, with the parent, with the system. So could your toddler be anxious? Possibly, yes. The solution is in figuring out what you can do to support that anxious child. And this would be true even for a child who has experienced severe trauma. We would be doing parent-child interactive therapy. We would be doing some kind of therapy that includes the parent because your relationship with your child is very healing, especially the younger they are. I hope that gives you some thoughts to go on, some things to explore. I know I can't tell you if your particular toddler is experiencing anxiety, but I hope it does give you some insight into what you might want to do next if you are concerned about your toddler or older infant. Thanks for tuning in this week. If you have a question you'd like me to address on the show, please go to childanxietysupport.com slash question and you can post it there. Maybe I'll address it on a future episode. And if you'd like to learn more about my program, you can visit childanxietysupport.com. Thanks so much and have a great week.